Welcome back, YouTubers. Today we are going to cover how to get the perfect show day tan and what to do when it does go wrong. So before we do that, make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment. Turn on those notifications so you know when these videos go live. And let's get into it. As always, if you'd like to work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you have to go. We do hair, makeup, suits, and posing, all the fun stuff when it comes to competing. Welcome, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back, you guys. Uh, photos and videos and that's actually where tonight's topic came from because a lot of people asked about tanning after that show wrap up So we're gonna talk about tanning tonight um, And fun times that are priceless. Yes fun times that are priceless at CCT. Yes, absolutely 100% You've been killing the YouTube game. Thank you. I'm trying doing my best whenever I get a moment Okay, so tonight we're gonna go over some tanning tips because this is something that I get asked about a lot and like I said uh, with that YouTube video that we uploaded for the Sacramento Pro, there was a lot of girls that had some severe tanning issues. Um, and sometimes it's kind of unavoid unavoidable. So uh, I'm gonna kind of give you some things that you can do to, uh, to avoid this. And if it does happen to you, what to do if it does happen to you. So um, the first thing when it comes to tanning is you need to be able to prep your skin for your tan. That is huge. So many girls forget to do this or they they do they do a step wrong or something like that. And especially if you're fair skinned like myself, when you're this fair skinned, you need to do everything by the book when it comes to prepping your skin because it will affect how you take the tan, right? So yeah, so when you are getting ready for your show day tan, make sure that you are prepping your skin. Uh, most tanning companies do have instructions for this. They have products for this. Use them. Use them. Okay. Uh, some girls just try to save a few bucks by getting cheap stuff from the grocery store and things like that. Yeah, you can do that. But why? Why risk all that stuff? Why? Right. I actually began my skin prep like a month out from the show because again, I'm super fair skinned. So in order for that tan to really adhere correctly, uh, I need to be sure that my skin is in, in the shape in order to take it, right? So one of the things you can do, A, you do wanna buy the, the tanning products, prep products, right? I, I'm a big advocate of Liquid Sun Rays. I've used Liquid Sun Rays my entire career and they have amazing skin prep products, amazing skin prep products that you'll wanna use all the time. Um, people that have, to shave incessantly, at least daily, does that affect your tan the morning of the show? No, so we're gonna get into that, don't worry, okay? So I start my skin prep a month out, okay? And what I start it with is what they suggest that you start it with, which is um, Suave Naturals uh, for your soap mixed with baking soda. When you mix that up, you mix it into a paste, so it's like a brick consistency, and you use that as, as an exfoliant. And then when you get out of the shower, you use um, like an Aveeno moisturizer, something that is not, based in oils, something that's light on your skin that's gonna absorb, silicone-based, um, alcohol-based, that kind of thing, not a lot of heavy, oily type of um, product. I had one of our girls that was using shea butter, um, and that's a very heavy, heavy, heavy lotion, which it's fine for every day, but it's not okay for tanning because what happens is, is that makes the tanning solution sit on top of the skin. And if you've conditioned your skin with these oils, even when you stop using it, it's still going to have the residue left over. So if you're using anything with a really heavy oil to it, you need to stop, you need to stop using it. And I would stop using it a month out from the show, okay? So that's what I start when I'm at a month out. That's what I do when I'm a month out from the show. Now, once I get within that two week mark, that's when I start using the skin prep products from the particular company that I'm using, which in my case is always Liquid Sun Rays. They have a body butter, they have a body scrub, and they have a charcoal soap. I believe the charcoal soap is the like game changer. Um, that they started using that, I think it was like three years ago because um, I used it for my, my shows three years ago and it just made such a huge difference in how the tan actually absorbed into my skin. That charcoal soap was, was a game changer for me. So, um, you use a charcoal soap and you use their uh, scrub and then you use their body butter when you get out of the shower. So again, those are formulated. They know those are going to prep your skin well to take your tan. That's why you use them. Other companies have products too. Like I know Pro Tan does have their skin prep products as well. Use them use the skin prep products that are approved by the tanning companies because it helps to make that pH balance of your skin correct to take the tan and it makes your skin ready to take the tan as well, okay? Skin prep is huge. Have I said that enough? Skin prep is huge. That one thing alone can affect your entire show day tan. So 
sometimes, like I know a lot of you guys out there use waist trainers, right? How many of you guys out there use waist trainers? Go ahead, hit that, go ahead and hit that little heart there if you use a waist trainer. If you use a waist trainer, what waist trainers do is they capture moisture in your core, like when you're sweating and things like that. So anywhere that you may be using a waist trainer or a weight belt or something like that where it's going to capture that, that sweat, you can turn gray, green, ashy, those kinds of things from using those. So again, if you're using those types of things, it's okay, but you need to skin prep. You need to make sure that your skin is ready to take the tanning solution. If you don't do that, your skin is going to is going to probably turn a little bit gray, gray, green, ashy, that kind of thing when you get the spray tan put on you. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this. When you go to shows, it almost looks like a girl has like a waist trainer on when she's on stage. That's somebody who didn't prep their skin properly, right, from using the waist trainer. Their skin has, has, has been greasy and oily and everything from all the sweat that gets trapped in there. Make sure you're taking care of that, okay? That's one thing that, that really bothers me that I see on stage, right? So if you ever have any of those, those kinds of things, make sure you're really, really prepping your skin, okay? If you bed tan, that's fine. You can bed tan. You don't have to. You don't have to bed tan. But also remember that if you do bed tan and like let's say that you wear um, a bikini when you bed tan or something like that, you're going to have tan lines. The spray tan for the show is not going to cover up those, those tanning lines. It's not going to cover them up. So make sure that you wear something that's smaller than your bikini that you're going to wear on stage so you don't have tan lines. That's why I make my posing suits the way that I do. This is one of the reasons why I make my posing suits so, so tiny. People ask me about this all the time. I make my posing suits, suits really, really tiny, smaller than your stage suits, so that you can wear them when you go tanning. You can wear them to the beach if you're comfortable in that or outside or whatever. Um, I actually wear mine in my backyard to tan. <laughs> so you can do that because the tan lines will be smaller than your stage suit. So you're fine. If you have little like moons underneath your butt, that happens a lot from people laying in tanning beds and having the crease, the fold of your skin, you need to get that part of your skin tanned because when you get sprayed with it, it's going to still be lighter than the rest of your body. So if you do go get bed tanned, you need to do these things to ensure that you're getting an even tan. Okay. Now, I really recommend, and this is for fair skinned people, that you DIY at least a day or two going into your show. Okay. I build my base tan pre-show so the tanning team doesn't spray in my face. This is what I'm getting into right here. So you can do this and you're not fair skinned, but you can do this even when you're not fair skinned. But especially if you are fair skinned, you want to do your actual tan DIY prior to day of show. You could start at two, three days out if you wanted to, right? That's just what works for my complexion. There you go. And I actually don't recommend spraying your face ever. A good makeup artist is going to be able to match your face to your tan. You don't need to spray your face ever. Okay. Um, so for example, let me use myself as an example. I start my tan. If I'm competing on Saturday, I start my tan on Thursday. Sometimes it even started on Wednesday. You can start it on Wednesday. I think Jen Dory starts it on a Wednesday. I think I remember her saying that for the Arnold or something like that. She actually started her tan on Wednesday for a Saturday show. So you can start several days out, okay? So what I do is I start, if I start on Thursday, same thing if you start on Wednesday, you put a coat on, you let it stay on for eight hours so it fully develops, and then you rinse it off and you put another coat on top. So what I do is I start it on, on Thursday morning, put my first coat on, wear it all day long, rinse it, put another coat on, wear it overnight. Then when I go to my actual spray tanners at the show, I rinse it and I go get sprayed by the tanners at the show. So at that point, I've already had at least 24 hours of this solution developing on my skin already, right? And I do rinse it prior to going to get sprayed by the tanners at the show. And then I let them spray. Now at this point, my skin has been really prepped very well and the DHA is already developing in my skin, so I'm getting darker. And as they spray me, I'm gonna get even darker and it's gonna absorb really well. I'm already pretty dry at that point, so that tanning solution is going to absorb even better. Okay, now somebody asked about the tanning or the shaving thing. You can shave up to eight hours prior to your first spray tan coat. So if I'm going in on Friday night to get sprayed that morning, eight hours before that spray tanning appointment, I can do my last shave. You don't want to do it after that because you got to allow your pores to close off so that you don't end up little, with little dots all over your skin. 
right? If your pores are open, that tanning solution is going to go into those pores. You're going to have little dots all over your skin, okay? So if you shave eight hours prior to your spray tan, you're good. That's the last time you can touch a razor until the show's over with. That's the last time, okay? So get it in, right? All right? Then get sprayed on Friday night. Typically one or two coats on Friday night. And then Saturday morning, spray it again. Now, if you screw your tan up overnight or something like that on Friday night, then you can go rinse before you get sprayed again on, on Saturday. Um, I know Ashley Kaltwasser uses li liquid sun rays exclusively, and that's what she does. She always rinses and those, then goes and gets her final coats done. So whatever works best for you. Again, you need to test this kind of stuff and find out what works best for you as well. So make sure you get the DIY. Like I mentioned, get your DIY kit ahead of time and test it. Test different products too. I've tested ProTan. I have tested ProTan. And actually for real life every day, I think it's actually a really pretty color. I just don't get dark enough for stage for ProTan. I just don't get dark enough for stage with ProTan. The only tanning product that has gotten me dark enough has been Liquid Sun Rays. That's the only one, right? Pro tip, Nair Spray, if your skin is okay with it. It's a game changer. I use it for the fuzzies, not what I normally, not what I normally shave. You know, and here's a good, good topic right here. So don't try anything the week of your show, right? Because Nair sounds like it would be easy, but for me, I break out. So if you've never used something before, if you've never tried a solution, if you've never waxed, don't do it the week of your show. It's a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. If your skin is okay with it, like Devin just said right here, absolutely go for it. I've tried Nair. I break out. Okay. So you got to know what your skin is okay with. I also break out when I've gone to get my eyebrows waxed. I have really sensitive skin, so I can't do those kinds of things. I know what works best for my skin. What I do leading into a show is I shave the areas that I typically shave, but then I also have a little eyebrow trimmer. You can get it for 10 bucks at Walmart. It's electric with the little battery. And that's what I use to shave off like my arm hair, my stomach, my back, all those kinds of things because it doesn't clip it right at the skin level. It clips it above that. So then I don't have little um, ingrown hairs and bumps and things like that. Um, I actually, <laughs> so I was at a show, this was like three years ago. I was at a show and um, my little buzzer broke as I was doing my final shave and I didn't get my back. So I did use a razor on my back and I should have just left it alone because my whole back broke out. So you got to know what your skin can handle and what it can't. And this is why I say you need to practice this stuff ahead of time and know if your body can and your skin can actually take it. I know that my skin can't take any of those kinds of things. So I know what works for me. That's why I use a little eyebrow buzzer in order to get my hair off. And you do need to get all of your peach fuzz off. We've talked about this before. I am naturally a blonde. So I have little blonde peach fuzz all over my body. Okay, normally you wouldn't see that. But as soon as you put a spray tan on, guess what shows up? All of that blonde peach fuzz. <laughs> and all of a sudden you look like you have a halo around you. There was one show where I forgot to do that. I forgot to shave off all my peach fuzz like on my stomach and I look like I had a halo around my stomach because of my little peach fuzz, my little blonde peach fuzz. So you do have to get all of your hair off, even if you have blonde hair, if you have light colored hair, actually even worse if you have light colored hair because it will show up when the tan's on your skin, <laughs> right? So be prepared with that, okay? Um, I really think that the solution for somebody who is fair skinned is to do your tan two, three days ahead of time on your own and then go get sprayed at the show. That tends to work out really, really well, okay? You recommend shaving your face for makeup prep? Yes, I do. I shave my face. I shave the peach fuzz off. I do. I do that just in regular everyday life. I do that. Take one of these, to, those to cuties. I'd love to see the little peach fuzz remover. Oh yeah, I should have brought it down. I got one. I've got it sitting upstairs. I should have brought it down so you guys could see it. But it's literally 10 bucks from, it's an eyebrow trimmer. Eyebrow hair trimmer. You can get it from, you know, Walmart. Like literally just walking to Walmart. Little buzzer. Has, takes little uh, AAA batteries. Really easy. Works out really well. Works out really well. Now, trouble spots. So this is going back to, this is why you want to have a DIY kit. Okay, if you go and you start turning green at a show, you can go rinse off whatever product they've sprayed on you and you can use your DIY kit to get you dark enough. 
okay? Some girls exclusively use DIY kits. Um, I personally have never done that. I've done the pre, uh, pre-tanning. pre I'm thinking about DIYing most of my tan uh, going forward, but getting the final coat sprayed on. So if you do get sprayed and you tur start turning green, if you have a DIY kit, then you're able to go rinse that green off and you can put the DIY on and you're good. That's why having the DIY with you is a really good idea, okay? That's why I really recommend having it so that you have something as a backup. Same thing as if you're doing your hair and makeup and stuff like that. Like you should always hire the professionals to do those kinds of things for you. But have makeup with you, have you know hair tools with you so that you can fix things if you need to. Okay, always have a backup plan. Always have a backup plan. If your tan is starting to get like clumpy or muddy or whatever, rinse. Go rinse. Don't try to spray over top of it or anything like that. Go rinse it off and start over. Okay. Can you do that even if the two products are different brands? Yes, you can. Because for a long period of time, Liquid Sunrise did not have a DIY kit. They do now. But they didn't have a DIY kit. So what I would do is I would order Pro Tan off of Amazon and I would put the Pro Tan on and I would start Pro Tan on, on Wednesday or Thursday and then I would go to the show and get sprayed with Liquid Sunrays. So yes, you can. Um, <laughs> look at Devin. No, no, you can. You can use different products as long as you rinse. Again, remember to rinse. You don't want to put Pro Tan on, keep it on, and then get sprayed with Liquid Sunrays. That's not what you want to do. If you rinse the Pro Tan off, yes, then you're fine. Because you could actually go get a regular spray tan, like a Mystic tan. You could go do that. As long as you rinse it before you get sprayed at the show, you're good. You're good. Okay? Actually, Liquid Sun has recommended that for a while until they have their DIY kit now. So now you don't have to mix products and things like that. But they actually recommended that. Because when you go and get spray tanned, that helps the DHA in your skin to start to develop. Again, it's going to get you darker over, overall. Now... If you start your spray tan on Wednesday or Thursday with the with the DIY kit, you still want to skin prep when you get out of the shower. So you're not just rinsing, you're still using the exfoliator, exfoliator you're still using the lo lotions, all of those kinds of things, up until that final shower that you take before you go get spray tanned at the show. Okay, when you get out of the shower after that last, before you go in for the spray tan from the, from the actual tanners at the show, you're just rinsing, you're not shaving, you can exfoliate if you want. You don't have to, but you could exfoliate if you want. No lotion. Okay? When you go into like a Liquid Sunrays tanning tent, they'll use their products that they need to in order to blend you well. You need to go in just as you are. Done. Ready to go. Okay? Um, so, and, and depending on your skin and things like that too, they have different solutions that they, that they can use. Like what I always used, worked well for me was the following day on Saturday, like right before the show, they would finish me off with the non-DHA bronzing uh, coat, which is a different product. And that would be what would kind of make me that dark chestnut brown that I needed to get. And that's what made me dark enough right there. Okay. So, you know, if you have a darker skin tone, you can get away with a whole lot more than if you're really fair skin like I am. If you're really fair skinned, you need to really take this very seriously. You still need to do all the skin prep and things like that. But if you have a darker skin tone, you can probably get away with doing the, doing the DIY no problem. If you've practiced the DIY a lot and you are really comfortable with it, then go for it. I know a lot of girls do that. I know a lot of girls do the DIY and they're good. They're good to go. I've used the Liquid Sunrise DIY and I've actually tested it and I actually really like it. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> when I first started competing... The only thing that was available was Jantana, and you had to do it yourself, and there was no such thing as tanners at the shows. And let me tell you, that was a mess. I was orange, my whole, like, it was just a bad situation. So I've kind of got PTSD from, from past experiences with, uh, with DIY back before Liquid Sunners was available. But they sent me a DIY kit, and I did it myself this year just to test it, and actually worked out really, really well. I was, like, probably the darkest I've ever been, and I put three coats on myself. So I was actually really impressed with that. So I'm going to play with it some more myself uh, prior to actually competing. And I might just do it all. And I might I might go in for like that final coat, the last day kind of thing. I think that's how I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do the majority of it myself. And I'm going to go in for the final spray coat the day of the show. So that's what, I, that's what I'm looking forward to doing myself. Because, um, yeah, actually doing the DIY was not hard at all. It was actually really easy. 
So good to know. Show this year. I had a weird patch on my quad, and the and the company said it was my skin, not LSR. But uh, on Saturday, a different girl scrubbed it out. Had I known, I would have rinsed Friday night and used my DIY LSR. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's why I think it's really important to have your DIY stuff with you regardless, right? Because if something goes wrong, you can fix it. If something goes wrong, you can fix it, and then you have that peace of mind. Um, there's some companies, like, you can always reach out to me. Um, there's some companies that are fantastic at spraying people. Like I'll always recommend liquid sunrays, hotspot. Um, who was it? I think it was maximum bronze that was out in California that I used last time I competed and it was the best tan I've ever had in my life. Um, so there's some that are really, really good. And then there are some that are kind of hit or miss as far as consistency and how they spray people. Um, in general, I can tell you who those people are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, why kids are great to have backstage when you're not doing the host tan or two for those backstage accents. Right. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Um, you know, I just go, I go back to this concept of don't go into this blind, right? Because a bad tan can absolutely wreck everything that you've worked for. So take the time to test it. Take the time to know what your body can handle, what it can't when it comes to tanning, what makes it look the best, all of those kinds of things. Take the time to do it. Okay. First aid kit of a competitor, DIY fishing line. Yep, backup of everything, LOL. Yep, I've actually got the fishing line sitting right here for those of you wondering that are on right now that are wondering what that is. This is the fishing line right here. This will fix any jewelry or connector breaks or anything. You tie it up with this, you can't even see it because it's, because it's clear. <laughs> so have this with you for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... These things, again, go, going back to the stuff just gives you peace of mind. You know, the last thing that you want to do as a competitor is be stressed out. That's the last thing that you want as a competitor. So have these things in your, you know, in your kit so that you're ready for anything that happens. Like what happened at the SAC show with a lot of these girls turning green. If they could have just gone back and rinsed and put on a, their DIY, they would have been fine. Right? This happens sometimes. This happened at a show earlier this spring where the tanning sponsor of the show was horrible. I was there and even Sandy said it like this. I have to talk to so-and-so because this was bad on all of the tans, you guys. She said it in front of everybody when she was giving out feedback, you know, so be ready for anything. Have a plan B, have a backup, okay? Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, there you go. Any questions, you guys? Any questions on this? I think I covered all of the questions that were on the... I'm going to check my YouTube really quickly and see if I, if I missed anything. No, I think I got everything. Any of the questions I didn't, that I didn't hit on yet tonight when it comes to the tanning? And like I said, once you get that spray tan at the show, you can't touch anything after that. No razors, no water, nothing. Okay. Till the show's over. It's okay. You're going to stink. Everybody does. It's okay. <laughs> Recommendations for back-to-back -back show days, Friday evening, then Saturday morning. Will tanning team tell me how to prep for two days or do you have pro tips? Just rinse. There's a lot of shows. Like if you end up going to national shows, for example, nationals that's in December is a two-day show. So you're doing everything as if you're going into that first day. And then after that show, after you're done, you just rinse. And then you go get another uh, coat the following day. Go get another coat the following day, just as if it was a it was a brand new show. Just rinse. Our promoters tied to tan companies for next year at the same show will be the same company. Um, some of them do have contracts with tanning companies, like they'll sign a five year deal or something like that with their show. So some of them do have contracts. Uh, most of them do actually. Uh, so, but I can't tell you which ones have a contract for how many years or anything like that, but usually, yes, usually promoters do sign on multiple years with a particular company. Um, but who knows? It could be, you know, that I can't tell you if next year it's going to be the same tanning company for the show you're talking about. I don't know. Uh, cause I don't know what their contract was. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. With the, the two day shows and stuff, you're good. You're good. My tan always looks better the second day after that first rinse. <laughs> Any other questions? And yeah, when in doubt, you guys, if your tan is looking muddy and stuff like that, just rinse and get another coat. You know, if you're booking with a tanner and they ask you how many coats you want, just go for the unlimited because then that way you don't have to worry about it. What's an extra 50 bucks at this point? You know what I mean? 
an extra 50 bucks in your peace of mind. That's what I try to tell people. You know what I mean? Like, have that peace of mind. Get yourself a DIY kit. Look with the tan spray tanners. I mean, then, then you don't have to worry about it. Then you're good. You know, the last thing you want is to go through months and months and months of prep and it all be ruined because of a tan, right? After the show, you know, the my show wrap up and stuff, one of the girls that I mentioned on there had a really bad tan from SAC Pro. We were talking back and forth and she was just really disappointed about it because I, I told her, I said I couldn't give her any other critiques because her tan was so bad. So uh, it sucks when that happens. You know what I mean? It sucks when that happens. You don't want all your work wasted because of a bad tan. Be ready, right? Be ready. Have your backup plans. Always have a backup plan. Always have a plan A, B, C, D, <laughs> right? <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already because we want to build that up and boost that up. It's growing slowly but steadily but surely. We're getting there. Uh, Cuties conquering the stage tickets. We do still have a few for at the door pricing. And then we also have our live stream available. So even if you're not in the country, you can join us via live stream as well. I just talked to one of my clients uh, right before this live feed here. She's in Poland and she'll be joining us virtually at uh, Cuties conquering the stage. She actually was like, she's like, I'm gonna go get myself a hotel for the weekends. And just so I can concentrate and be there and be present on the live stream because it is an interactive live stream too. You'll get to actually interact with us at the, at the actual event itself and pose and all those kinds of things too. Ask questions, all of it. Um, go flame double header. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. And CCTS is coming up quick, you guys. So if you're coming, if you're on our live stream or you're in person, get into our Facebook group because I'm introducing all of our sponsors in there. So you get to know them a little bit ahead of time and you can ask questions in there that they can answer for you at the event. So get in there and get involved. Um, we're getting, all, there's going to be a lot of information thrown at you guys over the next couple of months because it's coming up really fast, really, really fast. You guys really fast. <laughs> Thanks, I'm just excited to share the memory with so many local competitors. It's going to be great. Yes. Best live feed ever. Totally interactive. It is. It's totally interactive. Absolutely. Yes. So many familiar faces when it's local. Yeah, when it's local, a lot of familiar faces. Absolutely. And that's going to do it for this episode of Sean Stance. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment. Turn on that notification bell, and we'll see you back here next time.